Now you, may, you may remember a discussion of the birthday paradox, which says that if you have uh, a group of 27 random people, uh, the probability is almost two thirds that some two of them are gonna have a matching birthday. Even though there are 365 birthdays in the year and you might sloppily think that with 27 people there'd only be a 27 out of 365 or some chance like that, it's actually two thirds. And by the time you get to a class of 110, which is what we'll be, we have data for and we're gonna be looking at, it turns out that the odds are almost uh, three quarters of a million to one that you'll have a couple of people with matching birthdays. So let's look at the matching birthday problem a little bit more today. And the reason we're looking at it is because it's, it's a lovely example where there really is pairwise independence and not mutual independence. So it's reinforcing the key idea behind the additivity of variance and the pairwise independence sampling theorem. We're not gonna use the sampling theorem here, but just pairwise independence, but it's worth looking at. Now, before I go further, let me mention that this, uh, the birthday problem is just what we're doing for fun, but in fact, it has some real applications in, uh, in uh, more than one area, but the most famous one is the so-called birthday attack on a crypto system, which involves being able to search for matching uh, pairs of keys with a relatively small sample, uh, and you're very likely to find at least some two that match. Uh, so with that motivation claimed, but not examined, let's just go back to thinking about birthdays. Okay, so let's suppose that I have some group of N people and there are D days in the year, just to keep the parameters uh, abstract and not get too stuck on the numbers, keeping the parameters makes it actually a little bit clearer to reason about. So we're implicitly assuming here that each person is kind of a random variable or a random choice of a birthday. So each of, each of these people are really random variables that uh, return the value of a birthday. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we're gonna assume that all the birthdays are equally likely. Real birthdays aren't, They're, they tend to be, uh, January tends to be a popular month, November tends to be a more popular month than other times, uh, but um, let's ignore that because if the applications in crypto, uh, things really are uniform and it makes our analysis plausible, still plausible, but easy if we assume that birthdays are equally likely. Okay, P is the number of pairs of birthdays that match in this population of N people. Okay, let's get a grip on P by thinking of it as a sum of indicator variables. So let's let Mij be the indicator variable that the ith and jth people among the n have a matching birthday. Um, well, uh, the number of matching birthdays is then simply the sum over all the possible pairs of people of whether or not they have a matching birthday. It's the sum of these indicator variables, m, i, j. And the number of these indicator variables is of course all the ways of choosing two out of n people. So in short, if I look at the expectation of m, i, j, let's think about that for a minute. We're assuming that all the birthdays are, are equally likely. And so I'm asking whether the ith and the jth people have the same birthday. Well, whatever the ith person's birthday turns out to be, let's say it's November 5th, the jth person who has a uniform probability of equaling any birthday still has a uniform probability, one chance in D of equaling November 5th, which happens to be my birthday. Okay, so in short, the, expect the probability that any two people uh, have a matching birthday is one chance in D. And that means that the expectation of the indicator variable for that event, mij, is one over d. And that tells us by linearity of expectation that the expected number of pairs is simply the number of those pairs times the expected number per pair, n choose two times one over d. Well, as I said, we have data for 110 students. So the expected number of pairs in a collection of a, in a student body of 110 is 110 choose two times one over 365 or about 16.4 pairs is the expected number of pairs of matching birthdays. Okay, now that's an expected value. How likely is it to be if I take a selection of 110 students and I count how many pairs of birthdays are there, do I really expect to get close to 16.4 or not? Well, uh, what we're asking for is the probability that P is 
near its mean, that the distance between p and 16.4 is greater than k. I hope that as k gets bigger, this probability is small. Um, uh, and so I'm really quite likely to have close to 16.4 birthdays in the, my sample of 110. But this probability is one that's a mess to calculate. But we can get a grip on it uh, because the variance of p is easy to calculate, and that will allow us to apply the Chebyshev bound and get some kind of an estimate on the likelihood that p is near its expectation. So the, the key observation that we need is that the indicator variables are pairwise independent. So let's think about the indicator variable for the event that uh, the ith and the jth people have the same birthday. Let's call them Albert and Drew. So Albert's the ith person, Drew is the jth person. And I'm interested in the event that Albert and Drew have the same birthday. And let's compare that to another pair of people and whether or not they have the same birthday. So let's first of all think about Dave and Mike, whether Dave and Mike have the same birthday. And I want to know, are these two events independent? Well, remember, we are assuming that Albert's birthday is independent of Drew's birthday, is independent of David's independence of Mike. Each of the people is supposedly chosen independently and their birthdays are independently are independent. So it's obvious that these two pairs that don't overlap uh, have nothing to do with each other. And we don't have to worry about them. You could prove that formally, but it's, it, it is obvious because uh, each of the individual birthdays are independent. Um, now, what's more interesting is the case when I ask whether or not um, Albert and Drew having the same birthday is independent of Albert and Mike having the same birthday. And that one is not so obvious. Here's a way to think about what could go wrong. Suppose that, in fact, the birthdays weren't uniform. Suppose that some birthday was more common than others. OK, that makes it more likely that if Albert and Drew have the same birthday, it slants things so that they're more likely to have this very common birthday than they would have been otherwise. Uh, and now, once I know that they match and therefore are more likely to have the common birthday than they would have without any information, I know that Albert is more likely to have this, this common birthday than otherwise. And that means that Mike um, is even more likely to match Albert because Albert's got the common birthday than Mike was to match Albert without any further information about what Albert's likely birthday was. You can think about that and it can be worked out numerically easily enough. So uh, uniformity is going to be a crucial factor here in order to conclude that Albert and Drew and Albert and Mike are independent, uh, are uh, mutually independent events. But let's go back and think about it. All we really need is that Mike is uniform in order to conclude that these two events are independent because we know that Mike and Drew and Albert are separately are independent of each other. Their birthdays are chosen independently. So that intuitively means that uh, the probability that Mike has any given birthday doesn't really matter what's going on with Albert and Drew because Mike is independent of Albert and Drew. And if we know that Mike's probability of having a birthday is uniform, then whatever the birthday that Albert has, whether he matches true or not, Mike has a one chance in D of hitting the same birthday as whatever Albert wound up having. And that means that the probability that Mike um, matches Albert is the same one over D than it would have been uh, if we had no further information. This is an argument that, in fact, is made rigorous in some class problems and, and a problem set, but uh, let's just take it as uh, plausible enough based on this hand-waving argument that I articulated that these two events are independent pairwise. And so the corresponding indicator events, uh, indicator variables, M, Albert, Drew, and M, Albert, Mike, are, pairwise, are independent of each other. Yep. So that's what we've argued. But notice that these events of pairwise matching are certainly not three-way independent because after all, if I know that Albert and Drew have the same birthday and that Albert and Mike have the same birthday, I absolutely know with certainty that Drew and Mike have the same birthday. So this is a very nice basic example where you have pairwise independence but not three-way independence, assuming that all of these uh, random variables, Albert, Drew, and Mike, and the, uh, are uniform in what birthday they have. 
Okay. So let's go back to counting birthdays. Uh, the variance of an indicator is PQ. So in this case, P is 1 over 365 and Q is 1 minus 1 over 365. Uh, and because of pairwise independence, the uh, variance of P, which is the sum of the MIJs, the variance of the number of uh, birthday pairs is the sum of those variances. It's 110 choose 2 times the variance of, of the MIJ turns out to be about 16.37, which means that the standard deviation sigma is less than 4. Now I can apply Chebyshev, because by the Chebyshev bound, the probability that 16.4 uh, is within uh, 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 two sigma is, is further away than two sigma is only one chance in four, which means the probability that it's within two sigma, that the uh, actual number of measured pairs is within two sigma of the expected number, 16.4, is greater than one minus a quarter or three quarters. There's a three quarters chance that the number of pairs that we find is within two sigma of the expected number 16.4. Sigma was about 4, so this is 8, which means that we're expecting, uh, th with 3 quarters probability, somewhere between 8.4, meaning 9, and 24.4, meaning 25 pairs. So 75% of the time, in a class of 110, we're going to find between 9 and 25 pairs of birthdays. Did that actually happen? Well, it did. In our class of 110, for whom we had data, we actually found 21 pairs of matching birthdays. Literally, we found 12 pairs and three triples, but each triple counts as three matching pairs. Um, and there they are. The blues are triples. Uh, and you can see whether your birthday is among those and knowing that you have a classmate or two that have the same birthday that you do. So there are 15 different birthdays, but they count as 21 pairs because it's 12 uh, single pairs and three triplets, each of which counts for three pairs.